A quick overview of the EEG pattern called hypsarrhythmia associated with infantile spasms starting now. Hello everyone, Gil Solano here and welcome back to yet another weekly neurodiagnostics discussion video where today we will be going over hypsarrhythmia associated with infantile spasms. Hypsarrhythmia is the most common EEG pattern found in a special form of epileptic encephalopathy in babies called infantile spasms. And despite its name, infantile spasms aren't always found in infancy and may also be referred to as epileptic spasms. However, hypsarrhythmia is more frequent in younger infants and rarely found after two years. Infantile spasms are often caused by a structural change in the brain, and this change may be a result of an injury such as a brain infection or lack of oxygen, or may also just be a result of the way the brain developed. A syndrome defined by the combination of age of onset, hypsarrhythmia on the EEG, and clinical symptoms is called West syndrome. It's essential to treat babies with infantile spasms as soon as possible, and unfortunately this disorder is usually associated with developmental regression. Steroid therapy is often the first line of treatment along with vigabatrin. If spasms continue despite these efforts, other anti-seizure medications that may be helpful include valproate, topiramate, zonesamide, and clonazepam. These medications should only be considered if the first line of therapy fails. The clinical spasm itself is described as a sudden mass flexing and bending of the neck, trunk, and extremities. These events are quick and often occur in clusters at the beginning of sleep and at the end of sleep. It's important to note that these symptoms vary from patient to patient, while some children may have obvious spasms and others may be less severe or noticeable. And though clinical symptoms may vary from patient to patient, there's almost always hypsarrhythmia on the EEG. Speaking of EEG, hypsarrhythmia is characterized by very chaotic and high amplitude asynchronous slow waves. In combination with high amplitude slow waves, you will also observe irregular multifocal spikes and polyspikes. The hypsarrhythmia pattern is initially found in the sleep record, eventually presenting itself in the awake record. And there you have it folks, that concludes our very short discussion on hypsarrhythmia. If you would like to learn more, I'll provide some sources below where you can read up on it. And if you found value in this video, please consider sharing it with a student or colleague. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know what kind of videos you, my fellow neurodiagnostics professionals, are interested in. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.